It's time now for Tech24, and today we're talking about the role of open source intelligence in the war in Ukraine. And for this, I'm joined by technology editor Peter O'Brien. Hi, Peter. Hi, Olivia. Now, remind us, what is this open source intelligence? Well, if you follow France 24, you'll be familiar with the work of the France 24 observers who use open source intelligence or OSINT to verify videos and pictures. Now, the idea is really to uh, use freely available online sources data and tools in tandem with each other and in collaboration with the OSINT community to really gather uh, accurate, useful, strategic information and intelligence. So tools include things like satellite imagery, Google Maps data, uh, social media posts and profiles, uh, even data based on flights and shipping data. Military radio is, is another thing that's been up uploaded for everyone to pour over online. Uh, specific tools are also created for specific circumstances like this one. The Center for Information Resilience has created this uh, interactive map of the war in Ukraine to which members of the OSINT community contribute, uh, and that's not just hobbyists but also uh, professional bodies like the France 24 observers team as well. Now the main takeaway is before the social media age, intelligence was very, uh, very costly and very risky and very slow to accumulate, but now of course uh, it's accessible to everyone everywhere in the world. Mm, and I, I imagine this is not just a question of amassing information from internet sources, you do need a keen eye to piece the clues together properly. Yeah, of course, it's a skill like any other, and experience helps a lot, especially when it comes to geolocation. So Bellingcat, which is one of the first OSINT uh, organizations to achieve sort of mainstream recognition, they actually started as a blog. Uh, but since then, uh, they've made a number of remarkable scoops, in, in, including being the first to name the uh, suspected assailants behind the poisoning of uh, the Russian uh, opposition leader, Alexei Navalny. Bellingcat actually recommends that people hone their skills using quizzes and games like this one, which is called GeoGuessr, where you're presented with a, an image from Google Street View and told to find where it, exactly it is on the uh, on the world map. So some people have got scarily good at this, like um, a man called Tom Davies, uh, who's got, got a YouTube channel called GeoWizard. He's able to pinpoint these locations with amazing accuracy, uh, sometimes in just 10 seconds. Let's watch how he does it. Sunny's in the north this time, so we're in the south. Let's go Chile, with two seconds left. Nice! Nice one! So saw the Spanish, saw the sun in the north, gauged the trees which looked kind of like the trees you would get in, in the south of France. So not that tropical, a bit piney. And I figured a bit further south than... Um, you know, all the other countries in South America. That is truly impressive. Uh, very sharp and critical thinking skills there. Um, but I should imagine that despite this kind of playful aspect, it's not just a game for OSINT uh, practitioners. Yeah, of course not. All of a sudden it's got very serious indeed. And OSINT researchers uh, and enthusiasts are playing a crucial role actually in the war in Ukraine. Many of them keep their identities hidden so as not to be kind of trolled by people who could be... Um, could oppose the kind of thing they're posting. But we know a lot of them are actually have jobs on the side. A lot of them are very young in their early 20s or in, in their teens even. Um, some of these pages have grown by tens or hundreds of thousands of followers during the war. And they're now responsible, in fact, for supplying intelligence to the global community, including even world leaders and decision makers. So let me give you a couple of examples. In December, the OSINT page uh, Coupsur actually came across a TikTok video of Russian troops. Then they had a look at satellite satellite imagery and began to kind of uncover what the world would very quickly realize was a buildup of Russian troops around Ukraine. Just hours before the invasion, another OSINT uh, page uh, belonging to uh, the researcher Jeffrey Lewis, so someone who does put his name out there, effectively spotted the invasion as it was happening, tweeting that someone's on the move. He, he tweeted this along with screenshots of Google Maps showing what Google Maps thought was a traffic jam at 3.15 a.m. Of course, we know now it was the Russian invasion happening. Wow, and of course, uh, given the volume of information that's uh, circulating every day of the war, there's more footage to examine. That's quite a challenge. Yeah, of course, um, the OSINT community has become incredibly quick at analysing all of this uh, new footage and posting their results online, but this has its risks. So I talked to um, Baptiste Robert, he's one of France's leading cyber security researchers. He explained that actually hastening to publish sort of your findings based on open source research that you've done could sometimes endanger the very people you're trying to protect.
on va être en capacité, grâce à des techniques d'osine, de récupérer la localisation extrêmement précise de la vidéo. Ça peut avoir des conséquences graves si on poste la vidéo directement sur les réseaux sociaux. Parce que aujourd'hui, avec les techniques actuelles, si par exemple le camp adverse récupère cette localisation, il va être en capacité par exemple d'envoyer de, un drone ou ce type de choses. Donc il faut faire extrêmement attention. L'osine est vraiment un outil formidable, mais comme tous les outils formidables, il comporte aussi des risques. Now, as with any use of social media, the spectre of fake news is always there. Disinformation is, of course, a risk. Yes, yeah, so unfortunately, because the OSINT community is now such a buzz, buzzword and it's so strong, that, that means it's kind of become starting to be exploited as well. So Politico has been reporting that some pro-Kremlin channels have popped up on the messaging platform. Telegram, uh, they, they've actually been masquerading as open source intelligence pages, but they are, in fact, spreading disinformation. Uh, Telegram has, of course, banned uh, Russian state media in the EU, but not in Russia or Ukraine. And like other social platforms, it's struggling to uh, stamp down on this disinformation despite the ban.